single pair Ethernet. SPE is an exciting new transmission technology that will influence the building and industrial automation in the coming years. This presentation will deal mainly with the role Esprit can play in relation with all IP smart buildings. SPE is an addition to the existing digital ceiling concept and will supplement and not replace RG45 installations in this environment. SBA does not stand for its own. It is a result of the history how the application evolved. It all starts with the known structure cabling system. The generic cabling system runs from the workspace up to the floor distributor and connects people to the internet. It provides, so to say, the internet of people. The big change to the setup happened when Power e over Ethernet provided the possibility to give remote power via the same cable as data. And only one cable is now necessary to completely supply a device with data and power. With this, new devices came into focus, most notably IP cameras and wireless access points. These devices are part of the building infrastructure and not any more strictly part of the IT. Of course, the introduction of uh, PoE added a bunch of new requirements to the generic cabling system. These requirements are discussed in several publications from r and See for this the four pair Ethernet and the PowerSafe white papers. These first infrastructure devices wet the appetite and opened the door for much more building automation devices to be connected to the lawn. The standardization committees reacted to this demand by the creation of the ISO IEC 11801-6 standard. This standard specifies a structure cabling the ceiling with a service outlet SO covering a predefined zone for all IP connection needs, the digital ceiling. All the devices in this zone connect to the nearest service outlet and from there uh, to the nearest floor distributor and are connected to the network there. Here is where the IEEE concept of the single pair Ethernet fits in. If in the future so many devices have to be connected to the internet, the fear is that RG45 connections are too bulky to provide the necessary connection density. As a solution to that, single pair Ethernet has been introduced to this field of application. It roughly doubles the capacity of network devices and potentially reduces the cost of connections because, as the name say, it's only one pair instead of four. As you can see on this picture, uh, on this study really, uh, you see that uh, it's roughly a doubling of the port density is possible with single pair Ethernet. However, as we can see here, the uh, service outlet still remains to be an RG45 because for the high bandwidth applications like the wireless access points or distributed antenna system, where a four pair transmission is still needed. Single pair Ethernet was originally designed for automotive application. You can still see that in the specification of the 100 megabit and 1000 megabit variants uh, with reaches of 15 or 40 meters uh, for unshielded or shielded 
uh, this obviously is enough for a, a, a car, but uh, would not reach anywhere near uh, in the building environment. For building automation and industrial automation, IEEE defined the 10 base T1, 10 megabit transmission speed for distances up to one kilometer. Uh, however, these are two uh, different uh, variants of the 10 base T1. It's the L long version that reaches the mentioned one kilometer, but there's also the short version S, uh, which allows to have multi-drop capability. Uh, more to that later on. We also see uh, further developments going on in IEEE uh, on the uh, auto automotive side with multi-gigabit uh, single pair Ethernet developments, but here again for cars, and uh, uh, this are for uh, autom autonomous driving applications where they obviously need a very high bandwidth within the car. The Poodle, the power over data line, is the SPE version of PoE. Uh, it provides power over the same line as the data, and its most powerful version, uh, the class 15, it is able to deliver up to 52 watts uh, with a DC voltage of 50 volts. Poodle defines different power levels, 1 to 15, with different voltages and different power levels. With the 10 base T1L, the distance is often referred to as the 1000 meter protocol. However, it's important to recognize that this is only valid uh, for data transmission only, without Poodle power supply. We see this in this first column with no power and uh, we can actually reach up to 1000 meter transmission distance with a wire gauge 18 cable or around 629 meters with a wire gauge 22 cables. However, if a, a Poodle class 15 power transmission would be applied, uh, these distances drop dramatically. With a uh, 50 watt transmission, uh, we would only be able with a wire gauge 18 cable to reach about 170 meters. And with a wire gauge 22 cable, we are actually below the 100 meter threshold of the structured cabling and would actually be only able to support up to 70 meters. So if we are looking for uh, cabling in the building environment, we would have to restrict the uh, uh, Poodle class to 14, so only able to support 20 watts to one device. The single pair Ethernet standardization works in different standardization bodies. The responsibilities within these uh, different committees are clearly defined, and we see it mentioned here. This prevents duplication of work, uh, but of course, coordination and interaction between the standardization bodies is rather difficult difficult and time consuming. So IEEE defines the requirements of the channel. ISO ISC or TIA or Senelec take on that requirements and specify the channel requirements out of that. And based on the uh, cabling modules, they also define the requirements for the individual components. The ISC committees uh, for cabling or for cables or for uh, connectors, for example, take these requirements then and uh, provide a specification 
for the components. To coordinate the whole thing, there are uh, different user groups and associations that uh, look uh, for it, that the whole thing works together and uh, at the end can be used as a system. Within uh, the uh, connect to standardization, we have six different connectors that are uh, standardized for single pair Ethernet. However, uh, at the moment we have no decision on which connector type has to be used in what use case. Uh, we do see that uh, ISO IC and TIA made some connected decisions for MICE 1 and MICE 2 or 3 outlets, uh, which are uh, the dash 1 or the dash 6 connectors. However, these recommendations are for the outlet only. And uh, uh, at the moment is quite unclear in what use cases an outlet really would be needed. So uh, the, the whole decision uh, is um, not clear whether we really have something meaningful here. The general consensus uh, seems to be uh, that the connector should be selected that best suits the environment conditions of a specific use case. And definitely uh, the standardization groups missed to uh, define a one common interface uh, because they actually de uh, decided to promote with the dash one and the dash six two incompatible uh, solutions for industrial environment here and for the building automation environment. The easiest way to integrate single pay Ethernet into an existing digital ceiling is to place a single pay Ethernet zone switch near the service outlet. Based on the defined zone size, every single pair Ethernet protocol that we have seen will be able to support the complete range of the zone. And uh, all Poodle classes could be applied in these structures. So this solution is a pure plug and play solution that could be realized immediately if you have a digital ceiling concept. Uh, however, the uh, 10 base T1L protocol also would allow the use of existing RG45 cabling of shielded CAT6 or above to transmit four times one single pair Ethernet channel. In this case, the single pair Ethernet switch could be placed in the floor distributor in a centralized place as we know it today. Uh, in this case, however, as we have seen, uh, Poodle would restrict uh, the class 14, 20 watts due to the length restrictions we have of 100 meters and cable diameters of about 24, wire gauge 24 or 22. However, digital ceiling still is not the most commonly used implementation in the building automation. On-demand cabling is normally used in this environment. And uh, in this regard, single pair easement probably would most commonly be used in on-demand demand cabling, meaning the, uh, the devices will be placed where they have to be within 
an area uh, and then they would be connected to a near, nearest uh, sub-distribution point or uh, if a centralized solution is uh, uh, required they could be uh, uh, connected to the nearest floor distributor with single pair Ethernet cabling. Uh, in this case here, uh, we probably would need single pair Ethernet uh, panels in the uh, in the floor distributor and uh, 19 inch versions of the uh, T1 switch. Uh, with a Y gauge 18 cabling cable to be used in here, we could actually reach distances of up, up to 160 meter, which should be uh, rather okay even with a class 15 uh, poodle uh, applied here. The multi-drop uh, is technology is introduced to single pair Ethernet in order to uh, minimize the use of cable. Multi-drop means that more than one device, so multiple devices, up to eight can be connected to the same cable and communicate with each other. The way to do that, according to IEEE, is the use of T-junction connection. So basically what we have is a trunk cable that runs uh, from one device to the other. Uh, that is installed uh, where it's needed and on this trunk cable you can attach up to eight individual uh, devices uh, with a T-junction connector. The restriction in here is the length of this so-called stub uh, with 10 centimeters length, this restricts the usability of the solution quite a bit. So basically you have to know where your devices are when you lay in the cable in order to be able to actually go with the trunk cable very near to the area where your device would be at the end. A much more flexible way to do that uh, would be the use of a daisy chain um, implementation. Uh, and the special idea he here is to use duplex connections. So if in a duplex connection, the two sides of the uh, jack are connected together. So if you implement a small T, inside the device, you would be able to add one device after the other and you would always maintain uh, the integrity of this uh, 10 centimeter stub because you have it on one PCB basically in here. So you have a stub of whatever, a few millimeter lengths. Uh, the uh, standardization for multi-drop uh, has just started yet. So uh, there is no guidance from standardization committees yet. And uh, uh, the discussion is uh, in full swing on how best to implement and standardize uh, uh, the cabling for this uh, multi-drop application. We have seen before that the consortiums have an important role because they bring together different companies uh, and uh, uh, make sure that all these uh, different committees are staying aligned. The first single pair consortium that was uh, founded was the TIA spec. So this is a consortium, single pair Ethernet consortium, that operates under the umbrella of TIA and basically brings together, let's call it cabling companies. 
So companies that are interested in the cabling of single panes net, working together, R&M is part of it. Um, mainly spec is uh, US based, uh, let's call it. Uh, it's strongly driven by connectivity on the connectivity view. Uh, and it focuses on uh, building automation. In Europe, we have a different consortium that was formed, uh, the Single Pair, e Single Pair Ethernet System Alliance, where Arndam was a, a founding member of this consortium. Uh, this is a consortium that uh, um, focuses uh, more on the overall single pair Ethernet technology. So it brings together companies from all parts of the of the channel. So we have chip manufacturers in here, we have uh, sensor manufacturers, uh, connectivity manufacturers of course as well. So this is a much broader approach to the single pair uh, Ethernet technology. Uh, single Pay Ethernet System Alliance is uh, mostly Europe based with some Asian companies coming in uh, at the moment about 30 companies uh, that are in that group and uh, uh, working together to promote the Single Pay Ethernet um, technology together in the market. The single pay Ethernet interface selection uh, is not defined by standard committees, or at least uh, the standard committee selected two different designs, the type one and the type six for uh, the uh, outlet of uh, the different applications. So one for industrial Ethernet and the other one for building automation. Unfortunately, they actually missed to harmonize here. So that is based in the, uh, uh, in the standardization uh, that they actually came up with uh, two different designs. And obviously having uh, missed to harmonize on one design, uh, there is no reason really to, uh, um, to to stop there. So, uh, especially on the industrial Ethernet side, uh, there is some uh, unsatisfaction with the chosen T1 connector from Harting because of its size. The problem with this design is that it is too big to fit into a standard M8 uh, housing which is very uh, important industrial environment. And that is the reason uh, why, for example, the System Alliance uh, choose to, uh, to promote the uh, Dash 5 and the Dash 2 variants here, uh, what we call the MSP. Uh, this uh, is a much smaller design, which actually fits in every M8 uh, uh, housing and therefore gives a better usability in this environment. Uh, now, on the building automation side, typically we did have a much more, let's call it a standard following uh, policy and uh, therefore the LC copper, the dash one solution is very much um, set. However, uh, it, also in building automation, very, very often uh, the switches that are used in this environment, they are uh, coming from the industrial Ethernet side. And uh, in the system alliance, we will have uh, within this year uh, industrial Ethernet switches uh, with uh, the MSP design. 
And uh, it is very well possible that these active components will also migrate into the building automation side. So on building automation, we still see the chance that uh, either the dash one or the dash two would be uh, used in the future. That is the reason why R&M decided to leave its customers uh, the freedom of choice uh, in the connected design. For people who want to follow the standard committee's recommendation in the building automation, R&M offers the IC 63171-1 version, the LC copper version, and for people who would prefer a more compact design, uh, go with industrial style connections. Uh, we also offer the IC 63171 2 design that we call the MSP, the multi purpose single pair plug. So both products will be available from R&M. And for R&M, it was important that we are offering a complete channel. So we are not just aiming for one specific product. We do have the complete channel of installation cable, connection modules uh, that are able to connect two installation cables, so two lines with a duplex plug. And we have uh, the patch cords fitting to it. All these products, they use IDC termination technology, proven a million times in the RG45 environment. They are of proven, robust design, and the connections, connection modules, they do have this uh, adapter plate, a uh, free net adapter plate, that allows them to connect to every Freenet platform, panel or outlet that we have in our assortment. Uh, with this, uh, we do offer a complete channel to the market, including all the uh, requirements or the, all the additional products that need to be there. Uh, to really be able to use the products. Now, these products, they will be commercially available or available in commercial quantities in the fourth quarter of 2021. In order to be a little bit earlier on the market, we created a single pair Ethernet evaluation kit. Uh, this evaluation kit will be available from June, mid of June onward. However, uh, due to the fact that the products inside have been uh, produced with prototype tools, uh, they are only available in limited numbers. Uh, there will be three different evaluation kits available. So one with LC copper only. So with two LC copper connection modules, two patch cords, uh, and uh, an installation cable of 10 meters. Or same with MSP two of the same connections, two of the same uh, patch cords, or we also have it in a mixed uh, version where we have uh, one connection uh, for LC and one for MSP each uh, in order to uh, be able to compare uh, the two sides of the channel. So basically, this evaluation kit is uh, intended for business development and for partnership build up.
Also, the product development for sling operation at RM does not step with these mentioned products. Already, additional products are in the development pipeline uh, with a product launch that is planned for 2022. So, notably, we have two products here uh, that uh, already have been uh, patented. Uh, so one of them is a mic micro split design where four single pair Ethernet connections uh, would come together and uh, uh, could use one RG45. So each pair of the RG45 is uh, spread out into four individual cavities here and uh, the patch cords uh, can be attached in here. So this is for splitting uh, application use of existing RG45 cabling, or even of existing, uh, in the future, of existing uh, switches that may be able to recognize whether a base T or base T1 application is plugged in. Uh, and the other product that uh, is already signed to do uh, where we are working on is a field uh, terminable version of it, uh, which should have the ability to uh, integrate legacy field bus cables. Uh, here, definitely, we need additional input uh, from the application side, how this uh, termination should be uh, uh, specified, uh, but already we are uh, in the first development steps there. So uh, based on the motto that we provide the connect connectivity that matters, RNM is your partner for end-to-end single-pay Ethernet connectivity. And uh, visit our uh, website uh, with the link mentioned here where we have much more information available on single pair Ethernet, uh, but also on digital uh, ceiling implementations and power over Ethernet. Thank you very much for listening.